Aloha. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in again to Network Power Astrology. This is the whole new flow where we gain awareness into the strongest currents of consciousness according to celestial bodies. My name is Tina Gabriel, Tina Diggett, and uh, thanks again for uh, joining and at the uh, current flow of today's world. So uh, let's go ahead and get started so we can flow easily. Uh, great. Right now we see. Looking at this earlier. Virgo is like volleyballing the sun. <laughs> Like, like, right, right, it's like, it's like that, that epic moment, if anyone kind of is into volleyball, I love volleyball, I'm much into volleyball, and, uh, it's just like tennis, even, it's kind of like, like, right before you're about to just win, <laughs> winning, <laughs> uh, right before, so it's great, um, and it says a lot about, kind of, you know, what's going on, and, uh, the looks, so, yeah, coming from Leo, we actually, about to go into Leo, just uh, exiting Cancer as well, but not quite. Um, and we'll see if that is the focus. I was going to want to throw up right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the sidereal position. Well, let's see what's going on. So we have Moon, 20 degrees Cancer, Sun, 29 degrees. Right now, as we speak, it's in the 24. Actually, that might have changed. Okay. That's still right. Uh, maybe it's coming into. Uh... So, yeah, you know, I'd say the moon is in this really interesting place where, number one, it's in its own sign, comfortable. We're comfortable. We're about to be a little bit less comfortable. Uh, we're about to come into a place where we need affection, where we need uh, our ego stroked, where we need attention, and where we have an emotional need to direct our attention and our power and our focus to something that's worthy to something that's righteous, to something that's dharmic. Uh, Leo is a dharmic sign. Um, it's a fixed dharmic sign, fixed fire. Uh, so it's really just looking at what's going on right now and how can we create the right thing inside of this path. And so we're definitely going to be emotionally connected to um, what's going on. There's going to be emotional need for freedom with uh, Neptune retrograde coming when the moon it's, but right now, you know, we're comfortable. This is a day of comfort, and uh, it's good to chill. It's good to you know, be in a place of rest, being a place of planning, being a place of just, like, getting the flow running, getting the engine running, just starting, like I said, just, you know, right here. Just, you know, right before you hit the ball, right before the ball, right, right before you drop, you know, they say hit the ground running. Um, you haven't even hit the ground yet. You're, you're just you're just about there. So you're it's you're relaxed yet. Your mind hasn't quite turned on. And so now is the time to meditate on compassion, to meditate on having a sense of inner peace, to meditate on you know this idea that we need to create harmony in the world, but we don't need to create anything. We just need to pray to God. <laughs> you know. We need to, to know that we're already in heaven. We need to be in a place that is already there, you know. Uh, and that's 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 this area where Venus is, um, and that's the sort of shadow where the moon is right now. It's just kind of you know not being so uptight, not being so wrapped around this idea of needing safety and security and just kind of letting it go and knowing that we are safe and we are secure and we're invincible uh according to the heavens so um 
that's where it is, you know, uh, sun and Mercury, even where the moon is, um, 20 degrees, you got sun at the very end of Leo, talking about working with others and not trying to be a strong man and, you know, use the Mars aggressive uh, penetrative energy to try and get to a new place with someone, you know? We want to actually work with others and to awaken others' power and to see the dignity of the soul between us so that we can both transcend together. Um, so that's where the sun is coming to. That's the, you know, we're, we're, we're coming from a place of, you know, trying to get what we want out of other people and even ourselves in this kind of really intense way. And we're seeing that it's actually a co-creative process. And then now an understanding that it's a co-creative process, figuring out how to actually invoke uh, the Mars in both of us and, and how to actually invoke this idea that, hey, once we agree upon something, we can work towards it. We can actually do something. We can use our creative energy together and create the new future. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're manifesting right now. That's what we're seeing in the global scape. And so um, with the position of the moon, a lot of this is really around values, right? Moon is 20 degrees. Um, and all of this next new moon cycle is taking place between uh, 20 degree Leo, 20 degree Virgo and beyond. Definitely uh, a second, third house mostly about values, some about ego, but mostly about values. And so talking about values, you know, value is really just about, um, I often say a value is, I would rather die than do this, or I would rather do this than anything else. And oftentimes we hear, what can you, can we manifest, can we generate something that we value so much we value it above our own well-being our own life right and that's a perfect virgonian state of value because it's all about sacrifice and so um you know what do we value more than our own life what do we value more than our own needs right because the needs the truth of needs by the way if you haven't come to this the truth of needs is Needs are really an archetype. Needs are really needs. Needs are really these deep-seated programs. And when we say need, what it is is we need these particular things to not suffer. A need is embedded in our own suffering. A need is embedded in the amount of grasping and clinging to phenomena that we have that says... If I don't have this, then I suffer. I must have this to not suffer. And that's what a need is. And a need is really built based on our addictions over a lifetime, over a lifetime, over a lifetime, the things that we're addicted to, aka the things that we're programmed for, the, the habits, the ways of thinking, the views, the movements, the uh, attitudes and emotions, and all of these different ways, even the, the kinds of cravings that we have, all these different addictions that we have to existence and to various objects in existence, various things in existence, those addictions are what create our needs. And now we have our needs and needs are a uh, result of all of these past issues. So, you know, talking about values, we're saying, well, what do I need? Sure. But what do I value above my because the need is not the ultimate. The need is the condition of suffering that we're in. So what do I value above that? What, what transcendent need do I have? And that's what this uh, section is gonna be about. That's what uh, really um, this compassionate nature with Venus and the moon here um, Venus not necessarily liking this placement because Venus wants something back and the moon is really like, actually, it's all about giving. <laughs> 
and it's all about you know uh, 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 giving without expecting anything in return because that's how we create uh, heaven on earth. That's how we create goodness for ourselves. That's actually how we dissolve all this, our suffering. Right, because the moon is a sacred planet. The moon actually knows what it's doing. So here in working with the values in this cusp between Leo and Virgo, fixed fire, Leo going to dual uh, Earth, Virgo, and going to a place of, um, you know, trying to, figure out the right thing to do and, you know, manifest all about me and, you know, you know, manifest my, my best version or, or even, you know, transcending that and like taking care of things so that you can actually move on, right. Do the things that you need to do, uh, release the baggage that you need to move on to the next phase. Um, talk to the right people, make the right connections, uh, repair bridges, um, on and on and on and on. Do the things that you need to do to go to the next stage. Um, and then to actually create something new. Dual Earth. To create some kind of new material, uh, new a new focus in, in creating what's needed and uh, seeing the obstacles to getting the new heaven on Earth, manifesting whatever our, our Go to version of heaven on earth, and all of this is related to values. All of this is related to what do we really value, and what are our needs, and also what are our values beyond our needs? Because this is Virgo to Pisces, and so you know it's great to focus right on things that we need and the things that the world needs and things that the ones around us need. Especially, especially if we can get out of our own needs, which is also being talked about here. But it's also important to think about, well, you know, needs are only created because of our past addictions, programs, memes, archetypes, and deep-seated habits. So it knows what needs are. So what do we value beyond the needs? Is there something, is there something transcendent that you value? And that's Pisces. And so connecting the spiritual the transcendent to the grounded to what's the here and now to the earth to what's been manifest already to the result of all the previous energies and movements and actions and so forth and once we have that balance that's where we get goodness. that's where we get the fruit the fructification so um again talking about values the moon is going to go into uh what the new moon in like two days It'll meet up with, uh, maybe three days, it'll meet up with the sun um, just here in a little bit, probably at the very beginning of Virgo. I'm assuming you can actually take a look right now. Bing! Let's see. Two degrees, looks like. Meeting at two degrees exactly uh, in Virgo. Um, Still in the Tara Fabuni. So yeah, I mean, really just about this, you know, value, like, what do we value? And then holding true to the value and living according to those values um, and making that the prime focus. So during this time, it's very interesting because number one, Jupiter goes direct. Jupiter went direct yesterday. And during this time of the um, new moon, during this next moon cycle, the next 30 days, you know, uh, a whole world of change can happen in 30 days, as we know. And um, during this next uh, moon cycle, starting the, uh, what, the 16th, Uh, yeah, Jupiter is direct. And so this is very interesting because this is a great time. Like Jupiter is basically still now. It's not, it's not moving very much, but it will be moving. And the fact that it's, it's starting to move and the momentum is starting to move 
as the new moon starts, or as the moon starts its new cycle um, in Virgo with the sun, two degrees in Virgo. This is uh, super paramount because this is talking about our principles around where our values come from, number one, but also where the material for our life comes from, where our daily bread comes from, where the, any goodness that we have in the cosmos and all of our existences and all of our births come from. Where does that come from? The ether, the mother earth, the womb. And appreciating that, looking at, meditating on, where does the goodness come from? Oh my God, the coral is dying. That gives us all the oxygen that we need. The trees, those gives us all the oxygen that we need. Like, where is the goodness coming from? And giving a lot of appreciation to that, giving a lot of uh, grace to that, and connecting with our ancestors, connecting with the fact that we're standing on the uh, results of our ancestors. Something like, I think it took like, what, 4,000 people or 2,000 people or something like that to make us within the last like two or 400 years. If you look at all the ancestors, how um, your mother and father needed a mother and father. Their mother and father needed a mother and father. And it just exponentially grows. And in like two to 400 years, it's like thousands of people it took to like survive and to do something with their life and then make you, right? So it's a, it's a big deal. It's not something to sort of scoff at. And so recognizing our ancestors, recognizing our past, recognizing our past mistakes, recognizing our past uh, wins, so past wins of our ancestors, um, and really understanding where our light and where our goodness comes from, and really having an appreciation and gratitude for that. And then aligning that in that energy, because we, we're talking about values and uh, uh, the, what's really in alignment right now with the planets to, to bring a sense of balance and harmony and goodness with the, with the thought of values in our life and connecting with those connecting those values to principles you know and 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 seeing that and like you know meditating on these principles meditating on where the goodness comes from and our answers and all that stuff meditating on the metaphysics and the physics of the world and getting very clear about what is the right thing to do according to my you know my destiny what is the right thing to do according to my ancestors? What is the right thing to do according to all that gives me goodness in the world? And how do I release my trauma around not getting the things that I needed or wanted? Right? So keeping super grateful about the things that you have gotten, meditating on the things that you have gotten, being grateful about the things that you're being given right now, meditating on the things you're being given right now, and also releasing all the trauma of what you didn't get and what you didn't receive. Pluto 2093 Sagittarius. And it's just this idea of aligning our values and our principles and just making that the focus. Because Saturn retrograde right now is basically fifth the sun. Especially and, and during this. Um, next moon cycle, it'll be a really important aspect because it'll directly go into Virgo. And so with Saturn retrograde, also, what, two degrees, I think, right now. Yeah, two degrees, Capricorn. Um, you know, we have a lot of anxiety around not having work and not having the work that we need, not having the, uh, the financial capital that we need, not being able to make the career choices that we need. And, you know, it's retrograde. Mars is in retrograde right now with Uranus and Aries. Saturn's retrograde with Capricorn. Really, it's all about making a plan and relying on the cosmic mother and relying on the ether and relying on the co-creation to support us um, and not necessarily being this single individual that does all the things and creating this empire and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and actually, you know, uh, giving a lot of credence to our networks because we find a lot of freedom in our uh, support networks in the world. That's where we're finding a lot of freedom, and, and, and you're going to find even more freedom when you put your focus there and on support networks. So getting over this angst and getting over the general negativity of Virgo about 
not about all seeing all the obstacles getting what we need is really about a lot of just focusing on our values and our principles in the everyday process every single day waking up what do we value what are our principles principles by the way um now that we talk about values principles are like the laws or the guidelines of the world principles are like the metaphysics and the physics principles are like the gunas if you're into ayurveda like um or the doshas for instance. um uh, you know, tamasic, rajasic, sattvic, uh, kapha, pitta, vata, uh, you know, earth, wind, fire, air, ether, uh, boron, hydrogen, oxygen, whatever the elements will make up, whatever the kind, you know, uh, gravity, electromagnetism, whatever the elements will make up, whatever these sort of laws, aka or guidelines or principles are that's that's what we get to use that's what we get to be and that's what we get to meditate on that's what we get to be clear about um and that's what we get to use on an everyday basis to avoid all of this anxiety around work and all of these things also when the sun goes into virgo you know um probably again uh in two three days but also uh i would say around the 19th as well there will be a change. The sun represents the governments and the powers of the world, the sun and Leo in general. And so there will be a change and there will be, you know, somewhat of a fret about not getting what we need. Some kind of scarcity mindset sort of going around like a plague. And Saturn retrograde literally represents um, with this uh, placement with the sun, it represents the, our creativity being hampered and delayed by various global fears uh, and uh, and aversions um, and not being able to, to have the work that we need um, and, and do the daily work that we need because of fears and aversions, because of you know, various obstacles. So um, really understanding that that is going to be in the foreground uh, and it's time to relax, it's time to cool down time to get grounded, time to focus on our values and principles, time to live them every day. And that's really what's going to push us again, Mars retrograde, all about planning and planning, you know, what we need. And in this way, planning and not fretting about planning, planning in a dynamic, creative way, planning every day and then changing the plan and making the plan very flexible, especially with Uranus here, Uranus retrograde also, and being open to spontaneous plans and spontaneous changes of the plan. Um, and so that's really the flow. So the, I would say, according to this reading, according to the stars and celestial bodies, right now, just a lot of the home and flow is just about having compassion in our hearts, equalizing um, this idea of, you know, needing to get something from the world and other people, and really dropping in to our our true needs and values and even our transcendent values above our needs and focusing on those values and needs and aligning them with our principles in our everyday life to avoid the narrative of pain and suffering and obstacles and everything is wrong and government and conspiracy and you know, call it yuga and blah, 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 and avoiding all of that and literally being the pariah Virgo that says, as long as I'm working, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> because that, because the Virgo knows that if, if you're doing the right job and you're aligned with your values and aligned with your principles and you're doing what needs to be done, then you don't have anything to worry about because the plant is going to grow and you're going to have the fruit that you need. So... That's the whole new flow for today. Thank you so much for joining in. If you uh, like this reading um, and you want to see more, please like and subscribe if you're seeing this on YouTube or this uh, the audio podcast as well. Um, if you'd like a reading, uh, feel free to check out the links provided in whatever uh, medium that you're watching or listening in. Uh, I mostly work on Facebook and Facebook. So much love to you.